Hi everyone, I'm Fox. So I wanted to catch you up on some uh, project ideas I've been working on, uh, as well as like what's in the future and things I've discovered along the way so far. So recently I bought a uh, Wheelwriter 1500 and it, uh, it's really cool. It uh, is more like a printer with a, a keyboard stuck on the front of it than it is the mechanical typewriters we might think of. Um, and why would I pick this particular one? So uh, in undergrad, I, I actually started feeling wrist pain pretty badly and I was worried about getting an RSI. Uh, I had a friend who said, well, you know, I switched to Dvorak and the wrist pain I had went away. So I thought like, well, why not? I'll try it. And uh, I did. And, you know, 15 plus years later, not a hint of wrist pain. So it worked for me, but it does mean that I'm kind of confined to my own computers or computers that have, um, you know, Dvorak just already on them, which are few and far between. Um, and it also means that I, I can't really do typewriters. You know, I don't really want to relearn QWERTY at all, and uh, so they're just kind of out, but I really like them. So seeing this and figuring, well, it's got to be driven by some kind of, uh, well, for the era, probably microprocessor, uh, or at least microcontroller, and uh, thinking, well, okay, maybe I could go in and just like really precisely change uh, scan codes in ROM and have it reinterpret um, what those are, so that when I typed the keys, it would uh, return the letters from Dvorak. Uh, I was gearing up to do just this and dump the ROM and do reverse some reverse engineering on it, and um, my partner asked, like, well, is it just in there already? And I, I said, like, no way, why, why would they even have done that. You know, I, I didn't see anything like that in the manual. But uh, then I remembered a very sp suspicious key, re-looked at the manual and, well. So you pull this uh, lever forward and it will pull these wheels out. Uh, but there's actually a switch, so if you pull it even further, it will automatically load the paper. So right now, if I type, like, it's QWERTY, uh, and that little beep was its built-in spell checker, which we will also get to. However, if I hold code down, and then if I type LANG, and then O O two, it wiggles the daisy wheel in there, which is something it does as a user feedback. And I'm not sure if this is showing up, but this little LANG light has lit up, and now if I type, we get A, O, U. So the whole keyboard is now laid out in Dvorak. So yeah, if you want a Dvorak wheel writer, step one is just buy the wheel writer, and step two is nothing, just, just use it. It's already in the ROM. Um, so yeah, that was a surprise. Not a bad one, but still a surprise. So other projects I've wanted to do with this thing, kind of regardless, uh, one is uh, design some new type wheels. Uh, it sounds like a fun open SCAD project. Um, the typewriter actually uh, knows to some extent what kind of wheel you put in it. It will automatically adjust spacing for the font size, and it even can do variable pitch fonts. I'm not at all sure how that works. I, I would almost expect that to just be kind of burned into the ROM, um, but I still plan on uh, extracting that and uh, you know archiving it. I, I think that'd be a good thing to do. And maybe with a little poking around, um, I could find how it like actually indexes these wheels and figures figure out, uh, yeah, like what they are. Um, Another project that I wanted to do, so this these typewriters are more like modern 3D printers than they are, I, I mean, like typewriters, really. They have four stepper motors inside of them, 
uh, and at least two solenoids. Um, one drives the, the hammer into the type wheel and ribbon and paper, um, and somehow it's able to uh, index the uh, ribbons into three discrete positions. So I'm actually not sure at all how that works, um, but it, it does it somehow. So my thought was, well, if I created a new logic board for it, uh, one, it's really common to just d drive stepper motors. There's really good driver chips out there. Um, we have really good microcontrollers with a lot of really interesting I.O. So I thought it would be neat to uh, use like a RP2040 and uh, expose a uh, USB serial port so that it could act as a, a USB console to a computer. Um, or maybe even just break out like some UART pins um, or uh, put an RS-232 driver or something, you know, just like all sorts of things where this could be used as a, a really interesting just like terminal. Um, it would also be nice to store configuration on something like an SD card rather than what it actually has, which is battery backed RAM. It, it has a couple double A's in there that it uses to keep settings and user dictionary and uh, phrase storage and all sorts of things. Um, so yeah, just kind of modernizing it while keeping the outside and all of the mechanics the same, I think would be a really fun project. So for the last part of this video, I want to just kind of go over the things I've found. Um, and yeah, just the, the research I've done and thoughts going forward. Okay, so first let's take a look inside this thing. Um, so we have the stepper motor for the uh, platen over here. Tucked away in here, we have the stepper motor for the um, carriage. So this moves this whole thing back and forth. In the middle here, we have the stepper motor that drives the type wheel, which is right here. Um, and then this gold thing here is the solenoid that moves this large horseshoe shaped piece of plastic that finally drives the hammer into the type wheel. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, under here, there is the connectors for the keyboard. Um, and in this picture, the logic board is out. You'll see the um, the ribbon cables just kind of hanging out there. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. And then also we have this um, uh, power supply, which is uh, five volt and 36 volt rails. Uh, the 36 volts drives the motors and the uh, solenoid, um, the five volts powers the logic circuit. Uh, let's see, so, okay. So here's the logic board. Uh, a quick tour. So we have the main CPU here. Uh, this is a NEC V20. It's an 8088 compatible CPU. We do have this custom uh, Lexmark chip here that uh, I was warned about when I was speaking to uh, the guy who sold this to me about wanting to do projects. He said, you know, be careful, there's custom chips. I'm not sure what all of what all this does. Uh, I mean, I can see tracks going up to this totally unused uh, connector. Uh, it also goes to these two, which are the keyboard uh, connectors. So my guess is that it's at least one of its responsibilities is scanning the matrix and probably just presenting that uh, scan code on the bus to the CPU. Not sure. Um, this connector goes to the carriage and is the only connector that goes to it. So this is carrying um, all of the like drive current for the stepper motors and for the uh, the uh, uh, hammer, which I find interesting, especially given like how strange the uh, flat flex cable is. Um, here we have a stepper motor connection. Uh, the main power connector and the other separate motor connector. Um, what else? We've got RAM, and then actually behind me here uh, is the uh, the ROM chip. And you'll see that there's this uh, outline for a DIP package here. And that's just like electrically connected pin for pin to the pads on the surface mount one. So my guess is that just 
because of when these things were made, um, they probably just were aware that their mass groms were going to change and they just made this one board so they could use the dip or the 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 sop i believe that one is um the last thing that's really interesting is by this huge capacitor here there is this thing um this is a st l294 and i will actually talk about that more over here so let's take a look at that so it's this thing and this is what it looks like um it was you know oriented like that in the in the picture so it's this strange uh chonky package here um and it is marketed as directly like as a coil driver just kind of put that over there it's marketed directly as a coil driver um for typewriters and printers that that work this way uh, inside, apparently, it's mostly uh, just an OTA, and I was wondering why they um, why they needed that. Like, why go through the the effort? Um, but they do have variable uh, impact strength. They actually have three different settings, uh, so. I suspect that has something to do with it. I, I did manage to hook up my uh, scope here. And so this is actually really fun. I, I Did I say this yet? I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, certainly not by training, I am learning. And it's always nice to see sort of what you would expect when you learn something from a textbook uh, play out in real life. So this is uh, what it does when you actually type a key and I thought it was really neat that um, there's this period at the beginning of just on and that makes sense to me right because inductors resist current flow so uh, this thing is current limiting and so it doesn't really have to do anything while the inductor is initially building up that magnetic field but at some point um, that field is built up and it starts to limit the current and it does that uh, by chopping it. So here's a, a zoomed in uh, screenshot here. And so this is the, the tail end of the, uh, the long period. And then it uh, just switches to limit the current. Um, and this is really cool. These parts aren't available anymore. They're, they're obsolete, um, is the word DigiKey uses. Uh, but I find it really fascinating that this is kind of how it works. And this is probably my biggest sort of question mark. You know, I, I know how to do stepper motor drivers um, in that I know what they are, and they're pretty straightforward. Uh, the data sheets are pretty straightforward. But something like this is pretty pretty confusing. So I did find modern, I don't want to say equivalent parts, but parts that are designed to um, uh, be switches for high voltage, high current uh, inductive loads. And that uh, current limiting switches on top of that. And I mean, that seems like it fits the bill to me. Like, that's what this thing is doing. Um, it's doing it in a way that's very specific. Um, it, it can source as well as sync current and limit that. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if you need to do something like that directly. So my plan is to try and make a little, like, I don't know, demo board, for lack of a better term, uh, for one of these chips and hook it up to a non-typewriter solenoid and see how things go. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make another one of these when I have, have something to show. Uh, until then, thanks for watching.